One of the best parts of FlyQEFB's new visual logbook feature is the ability to search and filter for information very, very quickly. For example, we can immediately see by looking at the top of the screen that under the flight following tab now, we, are, we have 597 flights. That's a lot. Let's say that you want to narrow that down. Two ways to do that. One is to type and search keywords. The other is to change the time parameter. So let's take a look at both of those. In the upper right hand corner of the flights area, there's a button that currently says all time. If you tap on that, you can choose the time selection. As I move the time slider, take a note of what it says in terms of number of flights. So this is last week, last month, etc. Last 90 days, whatever. You can even set up a custom date range by selecting date range and type in your to and your from. So you could say, let's say you only want to see flights in 2017. You can do something like that. So very simple, very easy way to set time. Tap off that. To reset it back to all time, just move the time slider back to all time, and there we go. We're back at 597. Just as a quick reminder, I should point out that the section below the flight following my flights area, where it says number of flights, duration, distance, that kind of thing, is based on whether or not you select flight following or my flights. So for example, if you change the filter from the time period selector to last 90 days, like this, we are currently looking at the flight following tab. So that means in the last 90 days, between me and all the people that I follow, there have been 184 flights. If I were to switch my tab from flight following to my flights, we now have 10. So whatever filter criteria and time filter criteria that you set up um, on there applies both to the My Flights and to Flight Following, and it's instantly applied as you switch between the tabs, like that. One of the most common uses of filtering the flights is when you're using the Flight Following tab and you are following multiple people. It's a very quick way to find a particular person that you may want more information on. For example, I'm following someone named Mike and someone named Jeff. As I scroll through the list, I can see them, but if I want to focus the search on a particular person, I can just go up to the search box at the top of the app and type in, for example, Mike. Hit search, and you notice that the number of people in the flight following area has dropped to 127. Similarly, I could type in Jeff. When I do that, it looks like Jeff has 96 flights. Also, if I was interested in what either Mike or Jeff did, I could type Jeff, space, Mike, hit the search, and now I have 223 flights between both Mike and Jeff. Very often when you fly, you fly to a particular airport or two airports, or you know, you're interested in knowing about particular flights. So one way to find that is to type in the ident of an airport that you either took off from or landed at. You do that by tapping into the search box and type the ident of the airport. So for example, if I want to know all the flights that I took either to or from Payne Field, its ident is PAE. I just type in PAE, and I tap the blue search button on the keyboard, and it shows me two. I should be clear that you can also type that in with a K. K-P-A-E also works. Same two airports show up, just like that. Okay. Now, you can also search for different airports, of course, too. For example, if you want to look for Renton, you could type in RNT and so on. But let's say that you want to find all the flights either to or from Renton or Payne. Well, you just put those together. Renton's ident is RNT, so you just type RNT, then the space, then PAE. And what you find is that the system finds nine airports that are either to or from Renton. In the case of the top one, they also happens to be from Payne Field to Renton, but that's just a coincidence. So basically the way that we do this is if you type in more than one airport, the airports are logically ORed together. So you'll find any flights that were to or from either the first airport or the second airport or the third or however many airports you type in. The order doesn't matter, by the way. So, for example, if I were to type in a third one, say AWO, which is Arlington, another three get added. So it's very simple to do. Another type of filtering that you may want to do is by tail number or by type of plane. So let's do type of plane. I'll hit declare button, and let's say that I want to type in, I want to find all flights that were using the Cessna 172. I just type in the ICAO type for it, which is C172, tap search, and it looks like I have 42 flights that were executed in 172, like that. 
How about I fly other Cessnas? Say I have both a Cardinal and I have a Skyhawk. So I can type in C-172, C-177, and like airports, the system will OR those together. So if you have a flight uh, made in a 172 or a 177, it finds them. Notice now that the number of flights that it found jumped up considerably to a one, 243 flights. Other ways to look at this, let's say they want to type in something like a Cessna 172 search, and they want that to Renton. So again, now we have four flights. If I say Renton or another one called Harvey Field, whose identity is S43, now instead of four, we have six, and so on. If I were to remove the 177 part, uh, sorry, the 172 part, so just go up to my search box and make that only Renton or one or S43, instead of six flights, I now have 13. So the key point here is if you type in more than one item of the same type, like more than one airport, more than one type of plane, uh, and so on, what it will do is it will logically OR those together. So if you type in three aircraft and you type in three um, airports, it'll look for any flight made in any of those three aircrafts to any of those three airports. Notice that I said and in between them, because when you have different types of objects, like airports versus aircraft, those get anded together, meaning you have to satisfy both criteria. That's why when I typed in Renton S43172, for example, it found six. If I typed in one, with a Cardinal 177, it found zero flights, because it's adding all of those together. So that would have meant that you had to fly to Renton or S43, and fly in a Cardinal C-177. Those are two ways to search, but another way that you can search is by the title. So let's go back and just take a look at our titles here. We have things like Burger Run with John, Evening Flight, Evening Flight, uh, Afternoon Flight, all kinds of things like that. So what can we do with that? Well, let's take a look. Let's say they want to, to find a flight that I took with someone named Elia. Her name is spelled E-L-Y-A. I type that into search. And it found it. Scenic flight with Elia. It found that because the search also searches the text information, which is in the title. This is why one of the useful things that you can do is to rename the title from the default that the system provides to you. You can also use tail numbers to look up a plane. For example, if I want to see all the flights that were taken in a particular aircraft, say N656 Mike, I type in the tail number. And I find that it looks like Jeff Mirzapasi has 96 flights. And you can add, just like in airports, you can add more than one. So let's add in another aircraft. This one. And now we have 118 flights. How about either of those aircraft flying to an airport in the area called S50, Auburn Airport. So type in S50. So it looks like uh, either Mike's plane or Jeff's plane flew to S50 Auburn, Auburn 25 times in this area. And you can see that on the screen there. Okay, you can add more. Say that you want to know how many of those flights were in the afternoon. Great. If the title is has the word afternoon in it, you can just type that in as well. And it looks like 18 flights were in the afternoon. Let's say that instead of looking for flights that were taken in the afternoon, though, we want to find flights that were taken in the evening. We just back up and we type replace word afternoon with evening, and now there are only two of them. So as you can see, you can mix and max the filters quite a lot. One little thing that's pretty handy too, by the way, if you import your flights from another logbook system, we automatically supply a name for the flight. But instead of saying something like evening flight or afternoon flight, we put the word import into uh, imported rather into the name. So if you type imported into the search box, you find that we've imported 126 flights into the system. It turns out that the filtering system doesn't just apply here, but actually applies when running a full-blown report. Let me show you that. Let's tap the report button towards the top of the screen and notice it has the exact same search box and the time filter on the right side that you had in the flights tab itself. That means that all the same filtering applies. So let's take a look at that. Let's say that I wanted to see something like, uh, take a look at which aircraft I've been flying. If I tap on the aircraft in the text report, it will show me all the aircraft that I've flown in my entire logbook for all time, since I have no filters and I'm saying all time. So it looks like we have quite a number of aircraft involved uh, that we've taken flights in. Let's say if we apply a filter though to only look at ones, 
that are, say, in the last 180 days and taken in a 172. C172. All right. And now I tap the same thing, aircraft. And look at that. Apparently, we only have two. So that's how you can use the filtering both in the reports area, which applies, of course, to graphs as well. But when you go back to flights, you can also use filtering in here. So as you can see, Fly QEFB has a lot of powerful filtering in it. It can filter by uh, the identity of the aircraft, by the, any word that's in the name of the flight, by type of plane, by tail number, and you can change by whatever time period you want, including named things like last 90 days, last 180 days, last month, or any custom time period. And that filtering applies both to what you see on the flight screen and when you tap reports to any report that you may produce.